On this episode of Home Cooking Overhaul, Nick embarks on a trek through the wild to get to a remote location to work with Lisa, who is a creative, nature-loving gal. Nick must show this naturalist how to make wild meals on a fire. As wild animals close in, Nick faces other challenges such as refrigeration, storage, and lack of running water. A day and a half from the closest food store and primitive conditions may bring Nick to the breaking point. Will he survive? Find out on this episode of Home Cooking Overhaul. I'm not backpacking, I'm at a campsite. If I'm not camping, I'm barbecuing on the grill. But the rest of the time, like I said, I eat this stuff and bugs and whatever else I can find that's edible. So when I'm camping, I have a variety of different things that I take with me. I have my pancakes in a bag. I have um, like beef jerky, dried trail mix that I make myself. Um, I tend to be a little frugal, so I'll have things like camp breads that you can just kind of fry up on a little pan that I carry with me. Um, once in a great while, if I'm going to be camping at a fairly decent campsite, I'll do something really fun like bring hot dogs or hamburgers or potato chips, um, all the really bad for you stuff. I'd like to add a little variety, but still keep it healthy and frugal. So a typical lunch would be some red clover tea with a milkweed salad. Yeah, it's kind of bland, and after you boil it twice, it kind of loses its flavor too, besides. Sometimes if I'm lucky, I'll end up with maybe some raspberries, which are always a welcome treat. So yeah, that would be a typical lunch for me, unless I found some really cool bugs that tasted good. A couple of the issues that I've had cooking in a campsite was um, one day I went fishing and I caught this really cute fish and it was I was all excited and I had it in the bucket and I got it back to the campsite but then I really wasn't sure what to do with it so I kind of skewered it like I did my steaks and I tried to cook it over the campfire yeah it didn't turn out so good so I have two favorite camp foods the first one is steak on a stick which I absolutely love like I could eat that every single day for the rest of my life and never get sick of it the only problem with steak on a stick is that sometimes the stick burns through and I drop the steak into the fire and I have to go fish it out. Um, and the other problem is sometimes the steak doesn't really cook right, like it's either charred on the outside and really, really rare on the inside, or it's really super well done. Yeah, which, bleh. And the other favorite food is s'mores. Who doesn't love s'mores, right? I could really use some pointers on how to keep a consistent fire. I heard you're a barefoot chef. And I'm a full-time barefooter. Okay, Chef Overhaul. Now that you know the crazy insane foods that I eat, you think you got what it takes to visit me in my home, out here, and take the foods that I eat and make them taste better and give me a few recipes that I could actually use that I haven't tried yet. Let's see if you can do it. Boy, I know I have my work cut out for me tomorrow. It's gonna be a long day. This family really needs me. I better get some rest.
Well, that was a long day out on the river. Uh, it took about a good half day to get down to this point where uh, she's just shortly off uh, out that way. However, this is the only way to really get here without having to go on foot. This episode of Home Cooking Overhaul brings me out into the wild in the wilderness where Lisa enjoys most of her free time and every chance she can in the great outdoors. Now, um, she's about uh, maybe about a half a mile from here and I found a site to set up at uh, maybe about a mile down the road. But uh, we have a couple unique challenges that face us. Yes, it's beautiful and it's so calm and relaxing and quiet, but there's no refrigeration and everything has to be cooked on an open fire. And uh, that's another thing, running water. So I have a unique system for that. And I, well, I heard she does too. We better get moving. And uh, we've got a lot of work to do this weekend. So it's getting dark. Let's go. Is that really recording? It's a little too hot in this tent. But, uh, talk about roughing it. Since you're here, and I'm not gonna be able to get some sleep, actually, it is way too hot in there to even begin to start sleeping. That's what actually woke me up. On top of that, there was a little noise from the crew out here that decided to greet me with this wonderful setup. So, good morning. I'm actually going to stop in at the campground where uh, where this episode is about. Uh, Lisa is not expecting me until later tonight. I got up here a night earlier and I'm going to hike down to her site here in a little bit. We're going to do a little recon because I didn't get a much of a look of what she really has to work with there. So I figured while we still had time, if I have to run to a store or something, I still can. So it's probably going to be probably another mile from here. So uh, in the meantime, you guys can get this shit out of my face. And uh, here we are at her campsite. So we're going to take a look around, see what she's working with, see what we have to work with later, and see if I need to get to a store to get anything else. Uh, here's an interesting assortment of stuff right here on the table. This is interesting. I guess, um, I don't know if this is what you typically find on your dining room table, but I guess eating outdoors it is. And it looks like this is where pool of drinks. I don't know. I guess, uh, it's good to have some scouring pads and stuff like that. And uh, it's like fresh, clean water. It smells it. It's good. It's warm, but uh, not bad. Uh, looks like there's some bleach right here. That's a good thing. So let's take a look. Looks like here's the cookware. Uh, mostly iron, that's a good thing. You always want to make sure you use iron while you're cooking outside. Uh, this we need to address, see how that's kind of a little brownish. That's kind of rust starting to form. Scrub that down, heat it up in the fire. A little bit of oil, it'll take it right off. And uh, we'll get to some of that in a little bit. Speaking of the fire, let's go take a look. Fire some grills. Looks like that was the morning coffee right there. 
And uh, these are very handy, a trenching shovel. I actually have one with me. Um, it helps you really get in the coals and get the fire uh, straightened out. And uh, it's kind of adjustable. You can use it for a bunch of different things, digging around. We've got a grill. Looks like we got some firewood. We may have to come back with a little more firewood though, because we're gonna be doing a lot of cooking on here. Well, I better get up the trail so that uh, I'll surprise her later when I get here at night. Uh, she apparently, according to the fire, the way it looks, hasn't been here for a while. So uh, I don't know when she's coming back, but we'll be back tonight, walk up on her, and uh, see how that goes. So I'll uh, catch you guys later. Come on, let's go. One more thing we're gonna take a quick look at while we're here is it looks like we should keep some dry food in here in this tote. This cooler has, um, assuming her cold stuff in it, well, seems pretty cold, but it's still hard. I don't see a lot of ice in there, but uh, maybe she's in town getting ice. We'll find out. And, uh, well, I guess we are coming back later. Yes, it'd be nice to take a load off. It's been a long time. So, lovely place you have here. Oh, yes, it is. It's beautiful. Uh, So, um, our strategy. Okay. I feel like I'm gonna burn in hell. <laughs> I'm going down somewhere. So, um, there. Okay. So, yeah, it was a wonderful hike. And um, I'm thinking uh, I, I picked up a site right up the trail from you. So, we're gonna be close. This way, I don't have to make this trek each. Uh, <laughs> each time, so I set up up there, and we're going to be here for the next uh, couple days, day or so, we'll see how long. Um, I think it's very important cooking outside that we learn some of the basics. Um, you you know the basics. How you keep your kitchen clean uh, outdoors. It's, bleach it's, some water. <laughs> bleach some water, of course, it's the best way to do it. You know this, but I think it's important to share some of that, and maybe some of your knowledge with our um, uh, folks watching. and. I think that would be great. Um, as you know, I've been, I was an Eagle Scout. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, Reagan, my Scout Master, taught me a lot of stuff. So um, we're going to be sharing a lot of information from your experience and what I've learned over the years. And I'm a fanatic outdoors uh, person. So this is a great environment to work in. Beautiful fire. So you fire. weren't surprised by the bug? I was not <laughs> surprised by. Um, your fascination with uh, wanting to make something out of them. <laughs> I haven't quite found many good bug recipes. However, I did make a couple phone calls to some people at the Explorers Club, and uh, the best recipe I have were tarantulas and cockroaches. <laughs> so they're edible. The, I, they are edible, <laughs> and uh, and grasshoppers. So I think we may have better luck finding fresh grasshoppers than any of that in this climate. So um, we're going to have an interesting two days. Plus, I'm going to teach you some great meals that I cook at home and that I serve my guests and stuff like that um, that you can actually do on the fire. So we're just adapting them slightly to make it from the kitchen or the home grill to the fire and get it to your picnic table outdoors. Um, obviously, minimum refrigeration. Most of everything is on ice and coolers. So, we're also going to share a little bit about how to keep stuff clean and food safety and stuff like that with that as well. And uh, we're going to cook some great and delicious food. Sounds so, great. I hope you're going to enjoy this. Um, I'm going to be back tomorrow afternoon, I guess. Okay. Good work. Let's do it. You enjoy the fire this wonderful evening. Sounds good. Okay, here goes. Have a good one. You too. I can't imagine what that was last night, but today's trip here was a lot easier. First of all, I know my way, and second of all, there was no wild beast chasing me through the woods, which, if I caught it, I'm sure it would make a good meal. Another quick, easy recipe that you wanted to do was steak on a stick. That's my favorite. From your video that I saw, you want to do steak on a stick. So, we have sticks. 
Now, obviously, we are surrounded by sticks. <laughs> you can use metal sticks. Those are awesome. And of course, to make it easy, you can use bamboo. Bamboo sticks work too. But for now, we're going to use the metal because you're very big into reusing things and you don't want to um, make a lot of waste. And my knife. And a little soy sauce. That's, That's all this is going to take. Really? Nice and easy. Yep. Works we're going to go me. ahead. Get our meat open here. We're just gonna slice it, maybe just about like that. A couple nice strips. And then, there you go. Make sure it's separated. Watch how easy this is. If you notice, we're just going right on the stick with it, nothing special. I like my sewing. Give it a little, yep, that's all you're doing. You're just stitching right through it pretty much. What's nice, no plates, no pots, no pans, no cleaning. I like that. Well, very little cleaning anyway. <laughs> okay. That's one. That's two. What you could do is if you wanted to take the time and you had a place to marinate it, you could do that. Uh, just a little soy sauce. Mm -hmm. All it really takes. You can also use some teriyaki sauce. And for minimal storage and refrigeration, we have a bottle with us, but you could actually just next time you go to Chinese or whatever, you go to a restaurant supply store, you can get those little packets of soy sauce pre measured out. Gotcha. These are ready for a fire. Wow. So we're going to actually Can't sprinkle them with a little bit of soy sauce just to get a little flavor on there. Mm -hmm. But we're going to save most of it for once it's on the fire because we're going to re-season it. Gotcha. All right, so here we go. Off to the fire. Yeah. Then we go right over to our fire. And we're going to want to put the grate down the grill. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then take our delicious steaks. We don't want to put them directly on the fire part. Mm -hmm. Typically we want to cook over coals, but those are going to sit there maybe just a couple minutes each side. The heat from the fire will start cooking them and we're going to check them occasionally. We're going to turn them every so often and we're also going to keep seasoning them with soy sauce as we go. Sounds so good. We'll leave these here for a couple minutes and we'll come back and check on them shortly. Nice. Cooking on an open fire. It is a little tricky. It's not like a bed of charcoal or a gas grill or even the stove at home. What's very important is even heat. And you don't want to cook on flame. You want to cook on coal. So we turn them. Come down this side with some soy sauce now. Of course, there's a lot of smoke. Yeah, yeah. But hey, <laughs> the joys of cooking outdoors. I can't wait to try this. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> It smells really good. So let's get our glove again. And go ahead and give it a turn. Right handed or left handed? Right handed. Right handed, there you go. Alright. So remember, we just want to keep rotating them little by little. See? This way it doesn't overcook on one side over the other. That's fine. What you can do is to keep the stuff like this from sticking on the grill, uh -huh. you can always take some vegetable oil on a paper towel or a rag and wipe your grill surface with it. Okay. And then that'll keep it from sticking as you cook. So here we have it. Um, do you have any plates over there? Yep. These things are done. There you go. Watch out for your shovel. These are pan lids. I, I use them as plates as well. Oh. Saves on space. I thought and... you didn't hear what I said. <laughs> you have pots for these? Yes. Oh, we can use those later too. Perfect. Well, in the meantime, we have some delicious steak on a stick. Yay. Be careful, the metal skewer is very hot. Okay. Go. See that caramelized soy sauce over the top? Oh, it looks amazing. It smells it's, really good. It's perfect, just the way it is. Caramelized soy sauce right in there. The heat, hopefully it's not too overdone. The fire did get a little hot, but hey, it should actually taste really good. Mm, I can't wait to try it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go grab my glove. Mm, much good. You may want a glove. <laughs> mm. 
Cheers. Steak on a stick. Cheers. <laughs> so is everything you thought it would be? Oh, way better. <laughs> way better. I, this is really good. Mm -hmm. I could live on this. Mm -hmm. I think I'll have some for breakfast. There you go. These are really good. Okay, so I gotta tell you, these are way, way better than I expected. Um, I thought just steak, really, with just a little soy sauce, it's gonna taste like crap, but no, these are really, really good, and I will be making them from now on. Steak on a stick success. This is also a great treat if you have a couple people hanging around the campfire at night. Nice, quick, easy. We got a lot more work to do, though. Okay, now, we are nice for the next part. And we have two potatoes that we scrub down. We're gonna cut these up. Easiest way is just like that. You're mm -hmm. pretty good with cutting potatoes. Not too worried about that. But when you do do this, mm -hmm. for those of you that are watching that may not be too good at it, in half, slices like that. Just chop right through them like that. And there we go. So now one potato, two potato. Now, we need a little butter. Mm -hmm. And we have some foil out. Okay. Again, we're going with as little cookware as possible mm -hmm. to make it a lot easier to clean up after a meal. There we go. I got stuck together. So it's right out like that. There we go. Yeah, you can drop that a little bit. Okay, so we take one potato right there on top of the butter, mm -hmm. two potato right there on the other butter. I always like to put a little more butter on top. And then, we're gonna season them. Ooh. I noticed that you had some paprika, mm -hmm. so that'll go right in there. Uh, we're gonna take a little salt, sprinkle a little bit of it on there. A little bit of onion powder, that's all you had. You also have garlic powder, it depends on your taste. I'm a big fan of garlic and onion. Okay. This is the Portuguese. Well, there you go. Must be. <laughs> but I noticed you had the seasonings. This I brought with me. This is dill. Dill on potatoes? Yes. Really? Mm hmm Okay. Yep. I typically use dill in this recipe, although in a bind you can use parsley. Mm hmm I just sprinkle it on there. And dry dill is okay for this. Because mm -hmm. of the butter and the steamed it potato, good. it's actually going to come through and kind of rehydrate it. And if you want, I noticed you had some regular black pepper and a shaker. I have some fresh ground here that we're gonna use with our main course as well. And that's all, that's all there is to it. Really? We take that, okay. we wrap it up just like this. We make a little bag for them. Okay. That's all there is to it. And I just put those on top of the fire? And they go right on top of the rackets. We have a flank steak. Mm. Flank steak is very versatile. You can marinate it in a container. And I noticed that you pretty much have coolers and containers. Mm -hmm. So this is a pretty big piece of flank steak. It's nice you keep one on hand. Mm -hmm. And kind of left it out for a little while to defrost because your cooler is very cold. So we're going to take our flank steak and Remember, we're more concerned with individual portions as mm -hmm. opposed to feeding a whole family. Right. Because I know that you're conscious about leftovers because uh, you don't want critters. Yeah, we have a big problem with raccoons out here. Okay. So I have to be really, really careful yes, you do. about <laughs> leftovers and food storage. And So now here's how this works. We're okay. going to butterfly the steak. Okay, I don't know Notice the grain in the beef. In flank steak, the grain runs one way, this okay. way. We're gonna take a sharp knife, and by butterflying, we're gonna kind of fillet it. Oh, okay. So you've probably seen it done. Mm -hmm. You don't know what it is, but that's okay. We're gonna take our steak and open it up just like a book. Okay. Just like that. You can go all the way Keep through. it, no, don't go all the way through. Oh, You're okay. butterflying it. If you're flaying it, or splitting it, you go all the way through. Oh, okay. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna soften this up and we want it a little thinner. I brought a meat tenderizing hammer with me. Okay. Now we're gonna go over to the big picnic table over here where it's a little more sturdy. It's a 
great stress reliever. <laughs> and I noticed now, if you don't have one of these meat tenderizers, mm -hmm. um, you have a frying pan. You can actually just put some plastic over this and hammer it flat nice. with a frying pan, because that's very heavy. It has some nice weight. Okay. But we want to get this pretty thin. back over to our station over here, okay. where the rest of our seasoning is. And we're going to come back over to this workstation over here, where I'm going to rinse my hands off real quick, because now we're going to touch some of the other ingredients that we have here. Okay. We're going to do a little stuffing for this. Okay? For a steak? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's new. We have some prosciutto ham. What's nice is the pre-zippered bags is just stored in. It's nice and thick, so nothing that's raw in the cooler will seep into it. It's a very nice seal. Mm -hmm. Take a couple slices of that out. Okay. And it's okay if it gets rolled and curled up. And we also have some provolone cheese. Mm. Love yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. the, pr the prosciutto ham is packed with um, with paper slices or something between it to okay. keep it separate because it does stick together. It's very thinly sliced, and we're also going to get some spinach. What's nice about having a bag of spinach laying around like this, we keep it fresh and then cooler. Um, it has, you can use it in a salad, you can use it for um, vegetable on the side, you can steam it, boil it, however you want to prepare it on the fire. What's nice is, again, very minimal cookware, your vegetables, your meat and dairy are all in one place. I like the sound of that. So you don't have a lot of KP duty to do, you're not doing a lot of dishes, you're <laughs> You're enjoying the outdoors and doing what you do. You write, you can be creative, but here's some easy things that can easily be done. Again. It doesn't seem possible that I can cook this over a fire. You wouldn't think so. But what's nice about this is you can. Typically, you can actually, once you roll it up, you can skewer it and make slices. And you have like little pinwheels. Oh, fun. Or, what I do is, when I'm doing it over a fire sometimes, mm -hmm. if it's just myself, when mm -hmm. I'm outdoors, I'll typically stuff it. Start with your thin end. See how the grain of the meat goes this way? Mm -hmm. It makes it much easier. And then if you don't have skewers, which you do, mm -hmm. you don't really have to worry about skewering it because this going right here and if you want and we probably should have done this before we put it in there mm -hmm. you have enough salt from the prosciutto in there but maybe you want to add a little pepper okay just give it a little kick you can also add a little Worcestershire sauce if you want this is looking really good that adds an amazing depth of flavor to it that you get beyond salt and pepper. A little dash of that. My mouth is watering already. Now, let's roll that thing up. You can also use Dijon mustard, brown spicy brown mustard also works well with that. Okay. Um, all those are great possibilities when you do this. Okay. I just give the ends a little crimp. Just like that. Because mm -hmm. that's also going to help me keep track of it and also gives me something to grab as it's cooking. Good idea. Because you're going to roll it around on mm -hmm. the coals and mm -hmm. all the juices are going to stay in there because it goes around a couple times mm -hmm. and that just helps you. So we got this, 
and we can let that get in here and be warm by the time we put it on the fire. We want to get our potatoes on first because they take the longest. And like I said, these are going to take the longest to cook. Okay. We just want to watch them, make sure they don't burn. We want to just kind of rotate them around every once in a while. Okay. Okay. And uh, we'll we give those about a half hour, then we'll put the meat on there. By then the meat should be nice and warm, kind of almost at room temperature, as long as it's not too hot out, it should be okay. Excellent. Sounds good. Yep. All right. I think while she's getting her table ready, I'm just going to keep rolling the steak, and it's starting to get dark, so it's a good thing I have my flashlight with me. Um, it always helps so when you're camping. Fire is nice for light. But really, if you didn't have a camera crew and lighting crew here, it'd be pretty hard to see. So, we also gotta make sure that we know when our meat's done, and you can't tell without being able to see it. So. Now, fire like this is exactly what you want. Just the hot coals are perfect. Um, when we were turning this over, we noticed that the juices were coming out because of a little hole in the foil. So I'm just going to take a little sheet of foil and we're just going to rewrap that as quick as you can. It's hot and that'll keep all the moisture in. And again, we're still rotating our potatoes off to the side so that they don't burn. Fire like this is perfect for cooking on. Now we want to check up and see how done this meat is. We want it to be a nice medium, but we need to make sure it's cooked all the way through. We can sit here and pick apart and peel this foil apart, but one of the easiest ways to do it is I have a meat thermometer. And we select beef, and we want it to be about, we'll go for medium, and a glove. And we're just going to insert it into here, get into the middle of it. We want it to be in the center. We're going to wait to see what our temperature is. So far we're at about 138, 154, 160. We're medium right now. So I think we're in good shape. So we can go ahead and uh, take this off and we're good to go. All right, and our potatoes. So we're gonna, um, why don't we sit down and eat? Sounds good. I'm camping right up the trail from you tonight, so. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> we may take out some bongo drums. And <laughs> Sweet. And uh, we'll have some fun. So we're gonna eat together now. Okay. We're gonna try this delicious steak. Let's just try to get it opened up. It is very hot. It looks hot. Oh, it. oh my goodness, that looks Let's good. Let's get this on that cutting board. We've got a lot of juices that are oozing out there. Yes. The sanitizer's right there. Thank you. And that's a very good thing to keep out here because you don't always have running water. But now, would you just look at that? Oh, wow. That looks amazing. And you don't even need a plate. That's the best part. I don't need a plate. Exactly. Potato. A little plank steak. Look at that. Wow. That looked delicious for what? And it was so easy. I thought it was, you know, when you first told me about it, I thought it was going to be this big, complicated nope. thing. And wow. Absolutely not. When we start going just the prep phase, just preparing it, it may look like it's a little more work. But really, it wasn't. You just threw a few things on there, rolled it up, and. You have your fresh spinach, which you like fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. You have your cheese, you have some very interesting meats like the prosciutto, some nice Italian ham, and then a flank steak. You can do this. Mm -hmm. I prefer flank steak. You can do it with other cuts of meat. Mm -hmm. You can do a mini version, just use like the same steaks we used for steak on a stick. Uh -huh. You can take those and pound them out, like we did, and just roll some of the spinach and ham in that as well. Nice. But this is nice because if you have some guests that are going to come visit you, you can use this and you'll have enough to feed them. And again, small little portions, mm -hmm. not a lot of leftovers. Excellent. So That's the animals aren't coming to get it. Excellent. Quick question. Yes. Can I use bacon instead of the prosciutto? Yes, you can. Okay. You can use any kind of ham you want. 
I, you can use uh, turkey, but I like the, the contrast between the ham, the prosciutto ham, and the beef, okay. along with the spinach and the provolone. You may want to change up your cheeses too. You can use spontaneous cheese. Here we used provolone. Mm -hmm. Maybe you just were in a pinch and you only had American cheese. If you just want the cheese in there, you okay. can do that. Excellent. Right. And you just want to make sure that I like the saltiness of the ham. If you're using another meat or something, uh, you may want to add a little salt. But okay. if you're using any type of ham, bacon, pork, anything like that, this is a great way to do it. You want to cut down on the salt. It'll make it a lot more healthier. Excellent. Thank and you. you're good to go. So. If you want, give it a try. Definitely a very easy to do, quick and easy meal. You know. Camp finger food. Mm. I think I have a napkin for a little person. <laughs> Another wonderful day cooking, and I kind of set up everything as I went and found it. Uh, fresh catch of the day, tilapia. We actually stopped at a food store for that. Wait until you hear about my wonderful fishing trip. It was terrible. Oh boy. But something that you'd like to do is grow herbs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind that with a little paper towel and a fresh herb garden, you can bring some rosemary. Take a sprig of that out. And we also have a delicious lemon. Let me go get my knife. Interesting outdoor, outdoor knives. I'm just gonna cut that end off. Take a couple of these slices. The two slices are fine. And use a little butter because again, we have aluminum foil. Aluminum foil. And we're going to take our butter, drop it in there quite liberally, and we're going to lay down two lemon slices in the bottom with it. Okay. That's just going to get that lemon flavor into the fish. So we've got butter, we've got lemon, we've got a knife that's full of butter, good thing we're outdoors because we have our informal butter that we use. And we're going to take our fish. You can do this with catfish. You can do this with um, bass. You can do this with any fish you catch. But fish is very delicate, so that's why we're using the foil again with this. So they probably didn't warn you I'm not really a big fan of fish. Well, I heard that you're not. But I did hear that you've tried fish on occasion, and actually, if it's cooked right... It's not bad if it's cooked right, I just can't get it to taste good. That's okay. I'm going to show you how to get it to taste good. Salt, pepper, we got the lemon, we got the uh, butter in there, of course, a little more butter on the top. slice of lemon. I'm just going to squeeze that right over top. Drop it in there. Now, yes, the whole <laughs> thing is we're going to take the whole rosemary sprig, oh, wow. lay it right in there, okay. just like so, 
all that butter and moisture is going to give that fish a very nice earthy and lemon flavor to it. Now we don't want to crowd our fish and we're also going to use one of your iron pans to lay it in. Okay. When we go over to the fire, I'm going to show you the advantage of that is. We let that kind of stay loose in there. Mm -hmm. Tilapia is uh, very um, sensitive. It's, it's, you know, it's delicate. Okay. So we want to be able to keep that direct flame of the fire off of it. Mm -hmm. But this will act as a nice conductor to keep that foil heating. And you can then move it around as you need to to keep that lower heat on it. You don't sense. want to blast it over high heat right. like you would uh, like the beef we did yesterday. So, and again, over to the coals. And just kind of figure out where our heat is. We can start it up there, around there for now. Okay, get that nice and hot, let it start cooking, and then um, we'll come back and check on it in maybe about two minutes. All right, come over here. I'm gonna show you a quick little thing okay. while our tilapia is going. Uh, real quick, okay. we have our tilapia is getting happy. Shift okay. that a little bit. I get it. Give it a turn. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to add in a pan spinach. Just like that, in the pan? Right in the pan. We're gonna have some no butter. No butter, nothing? Well, we're gonna add a little bit of water as it goes along. But we're just gonna take some spinach Okay. And we're going to go ahead and season it with a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. And then we'll add the water once the butter melts. Okay. And our tilapia is starting to look really nice. Just turn it over. We're going to turn it back over. It's going to take a little peek. Oh wow, smoke in my eyes, what? <laughs> but if you notice it's starting to get oh, yeah. kind of looking good. Cook through. Get that closed back up. This is the part where we give it a nice little turn. And we're gonna get some water to put in that now. Cool. And here's our water. I'm gonna put that on here because we're actually gonna find a better spot. What we're going to do is we're going to take our water and we're going to heat it up so it's not cold when you put it in the spinach. You want the spinach to cook. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, that heat's going to slowly cook the spinach. We're going to add some water to it. Our tilapia is almost done. We'll check back on this maybe about two minutes. Awesome. Okay? Thank you. And we're going to get, um, see that sizzling there? Uh -huh. That's what we want to hear. That means that's cooking beautifully. Our water, we rearranged it just to get it over where most of the heat was. That's starting to sizzle even more. <laughs> so now we got to move this over to this side. So that doesn't cook as fast, but now we want our water over where it's hotter. Got it. And our spinach right there now. See, the whole thing is with cooking on a fire, you can't really say, oh, it's done or how long it's going to take because you really don't know. Um, really, it's just a matter of the heat your heat source, how even the heat is. And when building a cooking fire, the best thing to do is always just go with coals. So we're gonna take a little um, tongs here, and toss that around. This way it gets coated in the butter. I noticed that you also had some garlic powder. Mm -hmm. I put some of that on here as well. We'll be right back, I'm gonna go grab that. Okay, that actually smells pretty good. Oh, excellent. There we go, some garlic powder, right on there. I'm gonna check on our fish again. I'm gonna flip it over. Oh, see, that's almost done. Oh wow. See how that looks right there? Mm -hmm. Give it a poke. Still not tender enough. Boy, is it getting there. Drop that back on. In the meantime, our water should be ready. So, again, some nice hot water. Right in there. Mm -hmm. 
and by the time that it's evaporated, the spinach will be done. It keeps following you. Yeah. <laughs> Smoke is following me. Definitely uh, likes me. Nice sizzling round of delicious fish and spinach. And here we have it. Spinach good. and tilapia. So, just take a look at this. Put out. That fish. Wow, that smells amazing. It smells great. It smells it like great. really lemony and... It's a little present. <laughs> it looks like a little present. It's fresh spinach mm. and uh, you're good to go. Awesome. So, now dig in. Give it a shot. Breaks on the fork. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is not what I was expecting. Did you think that you would like really fish? good? No. Nope. Just the earthiness of the rosemary, the acidity of the lemon. That is so good. It just flakes apart. You don't even need a knife to cut it. <laughs> I need to see a spoon. I know, right? <laughs> Wow, this is so unbelievably good. I really didn't think I was gonna like it. I thought sure it was gonna taste like crap and I was gonna be like, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, no, this <laughs> this is really, really good. Um, in fact, I'm thinking maybe tomorrow for lunch I'm gonna try and make it. Let's see. Hey, fish, I'm surprised she liked it. I'm glad she likes it. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a good thing that I had some emergency fish that I actually bought at a food store. I mean terrible fishermen when it comes to these parts of the woods. In an ocean, I'll catch anything. Out here, the biggest thing I caught was maybe a minnow and a buddy of mine on the crew helped me. But at least we know that she likes it. And if we ever become really good at fishing, I know that we will be very well fed. Okay, so I guess with all the excitement of um, filming yesterday, the dishes didn't get done. And uh, our little friends Wilson and Rocky came to visit. And um, it was an interesting night and morning. I can't figure out how he did it, but I had put my cooler on top of the bin just so that they couldn't get in. And somehow, and that thing weighed a ton. I mean, I had, that was packed with like ice and food and everything. And somehow he managed to like slide it just enough to get his little paws in there. Those little guys, I'm telling you, they never cease to amaze me. They're amazing. Um, so I guess I got some dishes to do and uh, I'm going to straighten up a little bit and um, hopefully I won't have any more incidents like that because yeah, this not sleeping thing is not so much fun. Storage? Well, that's another story. Bins work great. In this situation with the critters that come around at night, heavy duty padlocks and heavy chains would definitely be best. They seem to be able to get into everything. Bins are a great idea if they have latches on it. My solution to this though would definitely have to be coolers. Just because it says cooler doesn't mean the food has to be kept cold. You can use it for dry storage as well and it keeps the scent of the food from traveling through the air and working its way to the noses of those little annoying ones that are out there trying to eat everything that you have out here. While we're on the topic of food storage though, cross-contamination is definitely a big thing. The last thing you want to do is end up with a bad case of diarrhea, dehydrating out here. So, two coolers definitely recommended. One for all your raw meats, and another one for all your dairies, and anything else that doesn't carry any kind of bacteria, but still needs to remain cold. Oh, hello. Hi, hey, Nick. Hello. How are you going? Good morning. I slept well, how about you? I haven't even slept yet. <laughs> I heard you had some visitors. Well then, Wilson and Wilson Rocky. Wilson and Rocky came to, came to visit. Well, I'll uh, drop this down and this is a quick and easy breakfast. Now you have clean dishes though, right? Yes. All right, why don't you grab a nice big frying pan and we shall do some eggs. Sounds good. And steak. All right, off we go back to our fire. And we're going to start with the steak first. Okay. 
we're just going to take this, drop it right on there. Nice. Salt, pepper, and we're going to let that cook for a little while. And then we're going to, just for the convenience, decide to wear gloves for this one. So I'm going to go get some tongs, we're going to give that a turn in a little bit, and then we're going to start our egg. Because the egg is quick on that. So we already turned our steak over. Okay. And the steak is probably going to take longer to cook than the egg. This pan is very hot. It's actually been up here for a while. We're going to take some butter, throw it in there. Well, I guess that is butter. hot, huh? <laughs> it's very hot. Wow. So, we're going to make sure we keep our glove around. Actually, it's actually almost too hot to hold. There we go. There's a little butter in the pan there. We have to move that off to the side. Because if we're going to cook an egg on that, this is going to be the fastest cooking egg you've ever seen. All right, so we're going to make sure that we have our spatula ready because we're going to drop that in there. This thing will be done in all of about two seconds. Wow. I'm going to break that up. Drop the keys on there. Then we're going to kind of move that around. Mm -hmm. And then simple cheese stuffed fried egg on steak. Just slide it right out on there. <laughs> and here we go. Want to give this a little fold now. And let's get as close to the edge so we don't burn the plate up as possible. And there you have it. Wow. Take a look at that. That's, that's a beautiful thing. That is a quick, simple, and easy really good. breakfast. So uh, enjoy it. Have a seat. Light fire. And enjoy your breakfast. Well, thank you. This looks amazing. Isn't that a beautiful thing? I guess my work here is done, isn't it? Thank you so right. much, Nick. You enjoyed your breakfast? I did. Really and good. you're going to have a great hike later, too. That I'm really looking forward to. Some ground dehydrated food? Well, I have to go get more stuff. Um, okay. Because the critters ate most of what I had planned to do. Um, but yeah. Well, send me a clip. I'd love to put it in there. I will. Okay. It's good seeing you. Thanks. See you later. Enjoy. Have fun. Keep the kitchen clean. You got your fire, pans, pots, and you know how to cook better food outdoors now. I do. Oh my god, I'm gonna. I thought I loved being outdoors before. Now it's like heaven. Now you're gonna eat it like heaven. I know, right? <laughs> I'm out of here. All right, enjoy Bye. the hike. If you or someone you know would like to be on Home Cooking Overhaul, please visit nickpiercefood.com. On the next episode of Home Cooking Overhaul, Nick Pierce visits Laura, Ohio to work with the Boyle family. The radiant Aunt Glow and nephew Zach share a passion for cooking. Their skills are good, but the space in the kitchen limits their ability to not only cook, but be creative. Nick hangs up the apron and jacket, straps on a tool belt, and pulls out the power tools for this one. Just a few minor adjustments are needed. And will Nick fulfill a special food request? Find out on the next episode of Home Cooking Overhaul.